to thee, omniscient Lord of all, in grief and shame I humbly call. I see my sins against thee, Lord, the sins of thought and deed and word. They press me sore. I cry to thee, O God, be merciful to me. For our daily prayer, we use the order of morning prayer, found on page 235 in the Lutheran Service Book, or page 024 in the middle section of Treasury of Daily Prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Now, when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. 
And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is korban, that is, given to God then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable, and he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him, for from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, evil, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Matt Richard, It is true that God created humanity as good. However, sin is like a nasty virus that corrupts mankind. It actually goes deep, as a virus is a small infectious particle that invades living cells and wreaks havoc on the whole human body. Sin, likewise, is throughout the human body and mankind as well. This means that you and I are not slightly infected with the virus of sin, but rather this corruption is so deep that there is nothing complete or uncorrupted in the human body or soul. Everything is infected. Our thoughts, our emotions, our external actions, and our doings, all infected. The religious leaders during Jesus' day were certainly serious and attentive to these visible sins. It can be said, though, that these religious leaders did not recognize or see sin like an infectious internal virus, but rather they saw sin like a germ. Yes, like a germ. You know what I'm talking about. Germs. They are found everywhere on toilets and handrails, on doorknobs and cell phones and pencils and keyboards and on and on and on. These nasty germs are lying upon unclean things waiting to pounce on you and get you sick. To the point, the religious leaders saw sin not as an internal virus within mankind, but like germs that were on dirty things. Thus, in order to protect themselves from these germs of sin, spiritual masks and spiritual gloves were needed. Spiritual caution tape was required. They concocted actually 613 rules to protect themselves from these germs, from these sins, to keep themselves clean. Do not do this, but do that. Keep away from this and keep away from that. Look there, sinful germs, stay away. Go here, it is sanitized. This path is clean and free from germs. You can imagine everything that went on with this. Now please know that this was not and is not all bad. You and I should, yes, should avoid these sin germs. The Apostle Paul says, Examine everything carefully, holding fast to that which is good and abstain from every form of evil. Exposing oneself to sin germs is not good. But even if you or I could keep away all of this sin, all these germs, that would not make us a Christian, my friends, for we have not dealt with the real issue. That is to say, we have not dealt with the virus of sin within, the virus of sin that is at the root of all of these problems. In other words, you may sanitize yourself with all these sin germs and you may purify your surroundings of these sin germs as well, but you have not dealt with the real sin virus that lay within. The reason why this is true There's nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. This means that the greatest threat of evil for you and for me is not some germ out there, but rather an infectious virus within your midst, that virus of sin that has permeated your whole being. Our hearts are indeed infected within, infected with sin. You and I carry within us a deep core of rotten viral filth that is called sin. Now, you may be tempted to run and grab Clorox bleach and hand sanitizers, masks and cleaning rags and so forth. In other words, when you are deceived, 
and suffer defeat to this sin virus and sin germs, when sin has its way with you, you may be tempted to try and scrub the sin out of your life. You may be tempted to bleach it out. You may try to concoct your own antibiotics and medicine to fight this virus and germs of sin. Do not go here. The reason why? No matter how hard you scrub, no matter how much you clean, no matter how much you sanitize yourself, you cannot eradicate the sin virus. You cannot do surgery on yourself. You cannot cleanse yourself. You are not the great physician. You are not the antidote to your virus of sin. But rather, remember Jesus. Yes, remember Jesus, the great physician. Remember that you are baptized. Your baptism was not some scrawny and weak and empty ceremony in the church, but an aggressive flood that covers you completely in the righteousness of Christ. The power and the effect of your baptism is the slain of this old Adam, the slaughter and the destruction of the virus of sin. Therefore, as your virus sin-filled heart continues to yield sin, remember and return in repentance and faith to your baptisms, where the sinful nature finds its end and where you may daily be reminded that your baptism is your daily garment and that you are to wear it at all times. Every day you are to be found, not in the virus and the germs of sin, nor are you to be found in your own attempts to scrub and sanitize these sins away. That is not who you are, but rather you are in this baptismal faith. You are baptized into Jesus. You are clothed in the robe of Christ's righteousness with all of its fruits, suppressing the sin virus itself. Dear friends, you have been washed. The robe of Christ's righteousness covers you and holds you in this sin-sick world. Do not fear. Do not fret. Your baptism and forgiveness remain day by day as long as you shall live. For the Lord himself is indeed faithful to you, cleansing you by his shed blood. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, Defend your church from all false teaching and error, that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governments, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. for joining us for morning prayer. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you.